Holy Bible is one of the world's best loved books. It has remained a symbol of truth, hope, faith, and has been an enduring source of comfort to millions of people throughout the ages. The Bible is a food that supports your soul and body. It has really changed my life. It gives me encouragement. And make me more believe in the Lord and the good work that He does each day. Today, the Bible is available in a vast array of languages, from Afrikaans to Zulu. And the number of translations keeps rising. Over 1,300 Bible translation projects are in progress around the world. This massive translation movement, to a large degree, is owed to the work of anthropologists, linguists, and reformists who continue to champion the equality of languages. Language is about what people use, and all languages are equally capable of communicating. This has been the principle underpinning Bible translations around the world. Here in Jamaica, an island renowned for a multiplicity of denominations and churches, a special piece of history is in the making. The scriptures are being translated into Jamaican Creole under the Jamaican Creole Translation Project. Providing Jamaicans with an accurate, acceptable translation of the Bible in their mother tongue is the principal aim of this project. The Patwa Bible, as some refer to it, is coming. Everybody did a try to touch Jesus, because the poor to cure them did not come from him. The Bible Society of the West Indies, a body supporting the work of churches in the Caribbean region, is spearheading the translation project. Reverend Courtney Stewart manages Bible House, the society's headquarters and hub of the project. The Bible Society of the West Indies is a member of the United Bible Societies, which is a global fellowship of Bible societies. We are one of 145 Bible societies worldwide. A fundamental mission of the United Bible Societies, of which we are a part and therefore we embrace the mission, is to make the Word of God available to people everywhere in their heart language, even though the scriptures may already exist in the national or the official language. The Bible Society of the West Indies, in accepting that the Word of God should be available to Jamaicans in their heart language, Patwa, has itself undergone a transformation. The change agent was Faith Linton. It was while reading for a degree in modern languages at the University of London in the 1950s that a spark was lit in her. However, immersion in the work of the society truly fired her conviction about the value of her own language. I became involved in the Bible Society, and that was in the 1960s, okay? And then I started reading the literature, and the literature was full of examples of how important it was, how meaningful the difference it made when people read the scriptures or heard the scriptures in their mother tongue. One day I plucked up courage, the opportunity just seemed to open up, and I said, you know, it is a strange thing that we are supporting others who are giving the Bible in the mother tongue in other countries, but we are not doing it for our own people. It was like one of these uh, minor bombshells. <laughs> Mrs. Linton led an internal information campaign to help the Bible Society's board understand stages through which languages go as they develop. The board eventually embraced what had long been observed by the linguistic community locally as well as overseas. Jamaica is a country with two languages in operation, English and Jamaican Creole. We had a lot to boast about, don't we? From The chairman was a very fair-minded man, although he didn't approve. And he, 
he, he allowed me to keep bringing the matter up on the agenda year after year and then he finally said, if nothing, if no steps are taken concerning this matter, we will drop it from the agenda. And that was when I got desperate. And I contacted a number of people, highly intelligent, well-educated, who I knew understood the situation and were very much, would very much be backing such a translation. And they asked for an interview with the board. And so they, these folk came and made presentations to the board. And things began to happen after that. In 1993, the project began. And from 1993 until now, 2010, we have published two audio recordings. In 96, we published A Who Run Things, focusing on the sovereignty of God. And then in 2006, we released The Christmas Story. And now we are at the point of releasing The Gospel of Luke. All of them are listening. All of love no enemy them. While some sections of the Christian community are conservative in their views to the project, there is an air of anticipation among many Christians in Jamaica and the diaspora who are eagerly awaiting the Jamaican Bible. Its impact on Christian worship and ministry are phenomena that can only be observed over time but many possibilities are apparent for its immediate use inside the church community. What it does is that it gives people who, you know, we are very expressive people, the freedom to quote the scriptures in some kind of standardized way, in patwa, whether in testimony or in song or in dance or in theater or in preaching. Reverend Garnet Roper, president of the Jamaica Theological Seminary and Dr. Delano Palmer, academic dean at the seminary, are exegetes for the Jamaican Creole Translation Project. Exegetes do close readings of translated Bible text produced by the translation team. Like all persons who are closely connected to the project, each has a deep sense of the historical context in which Bible translation projects are located. There was a time, a very long time, when the English, the people in England, were very much ashamed of their own language. It is only in relatively recent times when if you attended Cambridge or Oxford, uh, all the classes were done in Latin. You see, Latin was a language of the Romans. They were the conquerors. They were the superpower at the time. And so the people in England preferred to have their classes um, in, in, in the language of the superpower. And um, for about 200 years, France had hegemony over England. And so the people in England preferred French and Latin, but not their own language. So when it was proposed that English uh, or the Bible should be translated into English, they opposed it vehemently, very, very strongly. And translators like John Wycliffe and Coverdale and the like, these men were persecuted because they dared to translate the Bible into English. So what I'm seeing happening right now to our Jamaican um, language is almost what I say, old time sinting come back again. Colleagues at the United Theological College of the West Indies and Northern Caribbean University are also part of a formidable team comprising translators and linguists, a translation consultant and Bible scholars, which is working on the Jamaican Creole Translation Project. Professor of Religion and Dean of the School of Graduate Studies at Northern Caribbean University Dr. Gosnell York is one of the most experienced exegetes, having worked on other Bible translations on the African continent. There are about 6,000 languages, incidentally, about 2,000 of which we find in Mother Africa. So um, the world is a very complex linguistic uh, environment. So in any of the languages in which um, translation is done, including Jamaican here in this lovely land of wood and water, um, you have to um, 
there are three criteria that one uses to determine whether the translation is acceptable or not. One is faithfulness to the original language. The other two are, is the translation clear in the receptor language or the target language, in this case Jamaican? Does it sound natural is the third criterion. So naturalness, clarity, and faithfulness are the three meaning-enhancing criteria we use in determining whether or not a translation is acceptable or not. And what is true of any translation, as I've said already, is true of Jamaican as well. The translation of the New Testament into Jamaican Creole is done with the Greek biblical text as the source material. Dr. David Cook of the United Theological College of the West Indies pointed out that exegetes have a long background in the classical languages. He is also one of the project's exegetes. We here at uh, UTC have also been trying to get some of our students involved, our Jamaican students. And then we've had a few students who have been very eager to help and assist in the project so that we sit together. We look at the Greek text, uh, we, we translate it together, compare it to the Jamaican Creole, and the students who know the Creole can, can give us some idea whether the Creole itself is a, is a good, accurate translation. For many of our translation projects around the world, we seek to involve as many persons and groups, entities as we can, so that it becomes a, a project that is owned, not only by the Bible Society, but by significant organizations operating within the country. So there is a sort of a, a community ownership, if you like, even though the Bible Society may be the entity spearheading it. Our translation project is quite similar to many others. We have incorporated, for example, the linguistics department of the University of the West Indies, because naturally it's language, and we do need that academic perspective to ensure that the translation is not in any way capricious but it incorporates the best scholarship that exists. Three of the four members of the translation team are graduate students in linguistics from the University of the West Indies. Head of the Jamaican Language Unit, Professor Hubert Devonish, explained that the linguist's role in the project is working through stylistic and terminology issues, as well as dealing with issues of authenticity. We are supposed to help them as well when they produce the audio version of the Bible because that is the main medium that they are aiming at to reach the public. They accept that people are not going to be able to read the, the Cassidy writing system in the short term. They have, for Luke already, done the audio recordings. And part of what uh, is involved there for us is listening to the presentations. Jesus asked him, what did I say? What you get from it? The man said, If you love the Lord with your God, if you love him with all of your heart, love him with the whole of your soul. So we have that role as well in making sure that what comes out has some kind of, of value in terms of what the, the, would be appropriate for the public as well as appropriate for the Jamaican language. It has structure, it has to be respected, and we have to find ways of being respectful and stylistically appropriate in that language. The translation team at Bible House find it a daily joy to be involved in a project that will have a far-reaching impact on Jamaica and Jamaicans, both at home and in the diaspora. I really want to understand what God is saying, and I understand best by listening or reading it in my own language, which is Jamaican Creole. Bertram Gale, the project coordinator, has been seconded to the project from Wycliffe Caribbean. Wycliffe Caribbean is part of the family of Wycliffe Bible translators. True to the Wycliffe mission of being partners in Bible translation, the Caribbean organization was happy to join forces with the Bible Society of the West Indies to make the project a reality. After all, the Wycliffe part of the name pays homage to John Wycliffe, 
the English reformist who first translated the entire Bible into English in 1382. John Rooms is chief executive officer of Wycliffe Caribbean. People are diabolically against tra Bible translation because of what it does for the common people. They don't like it, but they consider knowledge of a foreign language a poor beast. And if the common language of the people gains prominence, they feel that their status, their educated status, is threatened. But doing language development and Bible translation will only enhance everything, because it is a fact that if you develop your first language, your ability at compre your comprehension is far better. You are able to read and write better because, it, in fact, it's best done in your heart language. You are better able to reason and manipulate ideas and concepts by developing your L1 first. And it is also easier to learn another language having started with what God has put in your heart first. Wycliffe Caribbean is one of the few organizations regionally that is paying close attention to the proliferation of the Jamaican language in the Caribbean and beyond. Rooms sees the Jamaican language as a prestigious language because of its linguistic influence on other Caribbean Creoles. The Jamaican Bible for him will play a special role in culturing a positive self-image for Jamaicans. We are saying to people, you are special. We are not somebody from the bush and we dark and something. God placed something in us that may, has made us special. God speak female language. Wycliffe Caribbean also helped to broker a relationship between the Bible Society of the West Indies and the Seed Company, which is one of its sister organizations. The Seed Company is an entity that has been providing funding for us. They understand what we're doing, it falls within their remit, and they are providing actual funding for us so that we can guarantee longevity of the program to completion and our goal in the medium term is essentially to have the entire New Testament all 27 books from Matthew to Revelation translated into Jamaican Creole. I would support the Jamaican Bible but um, the dialect Patois enough people don't know how to read Patois so I support it being taught in school and Several young persons who were exposed to the project have recognized that the Jamaican Bible will become the written proof of the Jamaican language and that there is need for formal training to teach Jamaican Creole. The Ministry of Education is currently reviewing the results of a pilot that was conducted in primary schools for the bilingual education program. This pilot project came about as a result of the Bible Society of the West Indies sharing with the ministry the context in forming its translation project. And if nobody take where few are sitting them, make them go on with it. Deal with people the way Uno want them for deal with Uno. The translation team spends a fair amount of time on the road exposing Jamaicans to the project. Translator Lloyd Millen holds a graduate degree in divinity and is pastor of Cumberland Community Church, a branch of the Jamaica Evangelistic Mission. The interaction, Millen says, provides insight into the psyche of Jamaicans and their relationship to their language. We ran into a lady who is a school teacher and we were kind of taken aback by her response because from the very moment we mentioned to her students that we are from the Bible Society, we are working on translating the, the, the Bible into the Jamaican language, Creole, and they would say, Patwa, since everybody's accustomed to that. 
And from the very outset, she got so irate. She was so angry. She was so mad. She said, this is foolishness. This is utter rubbish. This is nonsense. The children can't read already. I want to go and teach them patwa. I'm not just going to make them worse ignorant. So I said to her, but while you are objecting to the process, here you are still speaking to us in the same language. That different, that different. Me, 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 me upset now, I'm angry, that's why I talk that way. So I say, well, but there you go. When you are upset, when you are angry, when you are animated, you express yourself in the language of the people. Yet you find it a problem for them to learn their own language. So that's one response. Uh, there are those who, when they hear, they are somewhat uh, apprehensive. They are not sure if it really makes sense. And some will question about the amount of money that is going to be spent to do this. And some will say, well, they can't read it. But you'll ask them the question, well, if you hear it, can you understand it? And they'll say, some will say, yeah, yeah, I understand. Some say, no, I don't understand Patwa. But then when you read something from the text that we had with us, and you ask them, how does that sound? They'll say, ah, uh, yeah, I understand it. It makes sense, but. I can't read it. Now there are others who are in favor of the, of the process. Joanne Richards, a lecturer in ethnomusicology at the Jamaica Theological Seminary, is among a few persons outside the project force to use sections of translated text and to witness the response of some Jamaicans to the word of God in their own language. She tells of responses to the story of the prodigal son found in the Gospel of Luke. We went to this inner city community you know, by the study time and everybody read it in English first from the NIV. It was on the board and we all read it together in English. And then I read it for them in the Patois. And the people, the difference was stark. It's like with the English, you know, it was just reading words. With the Patwa, the people got involved in the story in such a way that was just amazing. And when I was finished, one boy, a teenage boy, he said, that was so much clearer. And then a lady said, and this is what I would say changed my life because it made me see that I couldn't stop doing this. She said, with the English, it was just words on a page, but with the Patwa, it was like seeing everything come alive in front of me. She said, I could see everything in front of me. She said, the thing is that I don't think in English. I think in Patois. And so whenever I hear anything in English, I have to process it. And while I am processing it, it's going ahead and I'm missing out on a lot of what is happening. And all of a sudden the veil was lifted off my face because I have had to worship in, in Switzerland in a French speaking community when three quarters of the stuff I wasn't getting. I've had to worship in a language called Moray where definitely nine tenths of what was happening I wasn't getting. I've had to worship in Spanish. So I know what it is to try to worship in a context where this is not the language that I think in. And all of a sudden I said, my goodness, how can we truly disciple this nation without the word in a language that they can understand at a gut level without having to process it? Missionary Alice Muller, who is in Jamaica with her husband, Joseph, knows that such responses to God's word in the mother tongue will only continue to mushroom. As I've been around in mission, around different parts of the world. Not so many, of course, but just a few have been in. I have this observation to make that if the scriptures are made available to the people by the language they learned when they were born and they were taught to eat, to drink, to say mama, to say papa, to say whatever language you were used to say, those basic statements that bond them with their families, bond them with the people they love, bond them with a culture. When the scriptures come 
in that language. It makes it so real for them. The Jamaican Bible is scheduled for launch in 2012, the year Jamaica celebrates its 50th year of independence. The release of the New Testament at that time will be indeed cause for jubilee for Jamaicans around the world who are slowly coming to terms with the might and power of their language. The United Bible Societies commissioned research that was conducted several years ago across all the world. What they discovered was interesting and very surprising to us. Jamaican Creole is the fifth largest language in the Americas in terms of speakers because they included not only Jamaicans who are in Jamaica, but Jamaicans in the diaspora. So we're talking about approximately five million speakers. We are fifth behind English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. No, there are other, there are families of languages that have more speakers than five million. But they are families of languages. Ours is a unitary language. All of us, all over the world, speak the same Jamaican Creole. So Father, we didn't ever. Like people have enough respect for you and your name. May the day come when you're ruling it every way. I do hope that as this version is published, that it will serve to make Christians throughout Jamaica much more confident and mature in their faith because with the English language alone we will have a limited understanding of the full knowledge of the scriptures. In the New Testament we are told that on the day of Pentecost that those who were there heard the wonderful works of God in their own languages, in their own tongues. And so I think it's important that persons are able to hear the Word of God and understand the Word of God in a language that is common to them and comfortable with them. From my own personal perspective, I think that the Potva Bible in oral form will be very beneficial for many Jamaicans, especially those who are more familiar with the